Nocturne number three in F major. I like this particular nocturne because of the first interval. That might sound a little strange to you, but Chopin often started a number of his pieces with the interval of a sixth. There are several preludes that started this way, and uh, the famous nocturne in E flat major, which you all might know. That one is, is such a, a beautiful piece, but I think Chopin loved that particular interval for some reason, so I began this particular nocturne with that interval in the right hand. You'll also see in the left hand lots of broken chords. Now in the Chopin nocturnes, when you see broken chords, they're usually really spread out and much more difficult to play. Because this book is early intermediate, and because there might be a number of younger uh, people playing these pieces with smaller hands, I made sure that the broken chords were designed to be played very successfully and easily and comfortably by a small-handed pianist. Now, another thing that I would like to mention is the fact that this nocturne has longer lines you might have several four major phrases. So again, it will take some real thoughtful listening and concentration to create the heart of the phrase, the focal point. Let me just play that first line and I'll show you where I think the heart of the phrase is, which is at the top of the beginning of major four. so forth. You hopefully heard what I did when I got to that C. I expanded the sound a little bit and really tried to make that the focal point. This happens all the way through this piece. In measure 13, you're going to see Pimoso, which of course means a little more motion. So I want to move that tempo forward a little bit more like this. Finally, we have that polka retardando at the end. Now, what's interesting about this particular piece is in the middle section, you know, most of these nocturnes are in ABA form. This is what Chopin did in his nocturnes. So I tried to follow that same general form. But in this section, I take that opening theme, which is this, and I use a compositional process called augmentation. When I double the value of all of those quarter notes and make them half notes, so then I also took the left hand over in eighth note patterns just to give it more color and keeping that nice flowing sound. In addition, each time the left hand goes over, we start with the fourth finger. And it doesn't matter what key I go to, I keep that fingering very, very consistent so it makes it easier to play, whether it's in A major, which it goes to in major 25, going back to uh, F major. So there, it's very consistent that way. We have a beautiful little cadenza in major 33. Again, I would like to hear some very free and ad libitum playing. But we don't want to hear anything that sounds metronomical. Not this. But that certainly does not sound very romantic. At the end of this piece, in measure 43, Again, these running eighth note patterns in the right hand, I have marked to be very espressivo. So let me just play a little bit of that for you in uh, measure 43 and 44, so that you'll know what my intent is. I 
I love this deceptive cadence. I love surprises. And in these nocturnes, you're going to find lots of them. You're going to find some very interesting modulations, lots of very interesting, surprising cadences. And this is just one. Again, at the end of this piece, take your time, nice, relaxed, retardando, and hold that last note for full value. <laughs> 